Hey, I'm Kate Word and welcome again to my channel here at Kate Word Art. You'll see that I love mixed media, texture, hard edges, geometry, collage, painting and layers, making my own papers with my jelly plate, and today I'm printmaking on my new 16 by 20 jelly plate. So, stay tuned! Hello friends, thank you so much for clicking on my video link. Today I'm working on one print. We'll do two layers to move it along, although at the end I think you'll agree with me. I feel it needs more, and but we'll do that kind of evaluation at the end. It probably needs some collage or another layer. Some of my previous prints that I've showed you in, in other videos are getting some collage additions, and I'll show those to you in another reveal. But right now, here I am using Blickrylic Turquoise, and it's a more fluid paint than I'm used to. And as you can see, I have used way too much. <laughs> and I'm trying to offload as much of it as I can and uh, I think I even uh, brayer over the stencil and continue to offload and I wish I had thought of using some deli paper or art tissue and I could have brayered over that too for some collage fodder. These are my hand cut Bristol paper um, stencils. They kind of look like cardstock now, but that's because I've painted over them a few times and they get they get heavier with the paint. That's that's where I'm briaring over it to try to offload some more paint. But here I'm also combining my hand cut stencils with Judy Woods, uh, a stencil girl designer and art mentor and friend of mine. Uh, I'm, I'm using her stencils from Stencil Girl. And the reason that I'm using hers is because they're large. And uh, they also have straight edges and I think it'll be a nice contrast with my organic curvilinear shapes up there in the, in the top they'll provide some good rectilinear lines and shapes for a contrast. My next color is going to be raw sienna on the bottom. Um, oh, that's a plastic stencil that I cut. I think I did that because I wanted to bridge the top and the bottom a little bit. Next comes the raw sienna. And you'll see <laughs> that I fortunately adjusted the amount of fluid paint. <laughs> that was a, a mistake up top that I, I did learn from. The jury's still out on this paint and whether it will work for me the way that it works for Fulton. I know he likes it and uses it a lot, but I just have to work with it more. Fulton, I may be sending you a box of paint.
Now this piece of Somerset paper that I'm showing you has some curious blobs on it. It's actually from a from an oil resist failure. I used entirely too much Vaseline and oil on the brush or I, maybe I just used too much of it all with the whole plate but I just I had a successful oil resist in the beginning when I was early in my printmaking but that was not it. Uh, so I just let it dry and here I am using it with the similar color palette. So let's pull this print. I think you'll see what I'm talking about as far as um, edge quality, the top versus the bottom stencils and the amount of paint that I applied. I, I think that the top where I used a lot of paint and I, I was rubbing kind of hard when I was pressing down on the paper, it, I think it turned out okay. It gives some nice texture and I, I like the texture. I'm a texture girl. So it, it'll be okay. Kind of looks like that wood grain but it has some nice contrast so that piece of paper gets air dried and I'm choosing stencils for the next layer and uh, these selections are going down over a different kind of experiment with <laughs> a previous print that I, I, I sprayed water drops from a water bottle and I think I might have even slung a little alcohol droplets too <laughs> but that's what those yellow dots are on my plate I left them as a ghost image of the dots and I don't remember if they transfer very well, but I covered a lot of them up with stencils and that's probably why some of them did not transfer. But it was an experiment and you just never know till you try something, so. You'll see as I place these stencils, that I, I'm just trying, I'm making lots of different decisions. I'm trying to uh, just respond to what's on the plate. And um, later, I decide that a lot of my shapes are the same size. And instead of redoing it, I, I didn't want to have to redo it. So I start. Um, repositioning them, turning them around opposite. I, I find some smaller shapes to go inside the, the, the holes and make little circles inside the openings. Some of them are round circles, some of them are distorted and more orb-like, but I'm just trying to create some distraction from the viewer who might notice that my shapes are all the same size and uh, or that I just put that one right in the middle of that plate. Um, I, I don't, I'm wanting to take away, I don't, I don't want anybody to notice that I just made those decisions. So I, I'm, I know I'm having a hard time articulating my choices, but it's it's an intuitive thing, and uh, even recreating it, narrating it, and watching the video and remembering the decisions that I made, even that's difficult. 
but it's a lot easier than talking while I'm working. I have decided not to try to do that. Now I'm placing some linear marks and I'm trying to look for variations on those repetitive marks and shapes. I just try to remember repetition with variation anytime I am um, composing. my little bits there in that bag looking for the smaller pieces that will go inside those holes This is the wiggly thumb distraction, <laughs> which helps me choose my paint colors. You're supposed to laugh. I do choose ultramarine blue for the top, and uh, it's a Liquitex paint color. And then I also choose quinacridone magenta for the middle. I think it's also Liquitex. And Vermilion for the bottom. And all three of those paints that I choose are um, they're tube colors but they're also transparent which I like for this step. Again, I'm thinking of warm and cool contrasts. Isn't that a luscious color? I love it with the blue.
And there's the, the, the vermilion. It's kind of hard to say. This is always a fun part to me, pulling off the stencils. Seeing those clean, crisp edges. Remembering to wipe around my edges. I'm being good. I'm remembering to put my brayer in the water too. And here's our print that we finished. It's been air dried and now we're gonna put it on top of the plate. And we're going to wait five minutes and um, I'll be cleaning up my area for uh, just a little bit and then I'll come back to pull the print and it is so much more improved after this second layer. I can't wait to see what adding another layer will do. I'm, I'm wanting to resolve uh, the, the white negative space at the bottom where I used the other the crisp Judy Woods stencil um, th there's some white negative space there so I'm, I'm gonna try to rectify that but I really appreciate all of you sticking with me to watch here and uh, I hope you all have a great week and that you make some art. I hope you, if you don't have a jelly plate or if you have a smaller plate and you, you think you might want to do the, the larger plate, I hope you'll save your money and because it is, it is an investment to buy the larger plate, but I really hope you will. I hope that Fulton and and I and others who are exploring with a larger plate will inspire you and influence you to make the leap because it's so much fun. See you next time.
see, I think this is so much more improved. Uh, the, the contrast, it adds some drama. It's not such a, a blah, boring print. So I'm going to bring it closer so that you can see a close-up. You can see the texture under there. You can even see some of the yellow dots that I didn't think would transfer, and they did.